So you want to learn how to play left-handed? What if you're righty based like I am, naturally? Well, you got to practice, practice, and practice. And if I can do it, you can do it too. And I've got a few little tips to kind of show you, maybe to help you get on your way to going lefty, just like your hero, Paul. As long as you can play bass right-handed, if you give it some effort and some dedication and a lot of hard work and practice, 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 uh, I think you'll be able to do what myself and uh, a few other people have done uh, in the Beatle tribute world and play left-handed, even if you're right-handed. Okay, so tune in here, check it out. Hopefully this will help. So Paul played with a pick, and what you want to do is get it comfortably in your hand, even when you're playing right-handed. You put it between your thumb and your index finger, and kind of your middle finger. You know, get a good spot where you can rest your palm, and you just start going up and down the strings, plucking the strings with a pick, holding the pick tight enough, but not too tight. You want it to be able to move a little bit, have a little bit of give. Um, you're playing down strokes. Um, you know, per people that play for years and years are able to do upstrokes and downstrokes very precisely and very quickly. That's a quick way to play. The next little bit is just some uh, finger dexterity, um, doing four, four note runs, um, just to get those fingers stretched out to all the frets and making sure you, your fingers are able to have a nice little spread on the fingerboard. Um, it's going to help you playing righty or lefty. It's really not going to matter. But uh, I do these to warm up and get the fingers nice and ready. Okay, now we're going to look at the tools of the trade, which are the Hoffner bases. Um, there's a, a, a quite a bit of a range uh, you can choose from depending on how much you want to spend. A Chinese one. Uh, Chinese ones are, are fairly reasonable ranging from 400 to about 800, or the German-made ones, which are about 2,000. First one we're going to look at is a Chinese-made ignition base. This runs about 400 bucks. Uh, it looks pretty good, good for the beginners. It's a cheap, cheap version of it. But if you want to spend a little bit more, you can have an upgrade to this, which is about $800 contemporary base. It looks a lot closer to Paul McCartney's uh, model. Uh, this is still a Chinese-made one. Um, but as you can see, it looks a lot closer cosmetically to Paul's. Um, more vintage pickup looking and all that stuff too. And then you get to the German made bases. And these are all the ones I use. Um, I only use the German bases. That's just my preference. It doesn't really matter if you're beginning. Uh, you get the Paul McCartney model, which is this 501. Um, all German made, still made by hand in Germany. And it's just a beautiful base, you know, light. There's no center block or anything in it. And of course, there's the cavern base, um, which is a 501, but uh, that was Paul's first base, which he obviously played at the cavern club. That's, that's why they nicknamed it the cavern base. Um, still made in Germany as well. Um, you could get these in the contemporary ones, I believe too, and, and maybe the ignitions. I've seen a couple here and there, but uh, these are this is a really beautiful um example that i found online this isn't mine i happen to have owned a few of them i have one now but uh this one looks really nice so i decided to show you this one well you've got to make sure you have a good grasp on the pick when you're not left-handed naturally your left hand is not used to holding a pick so you want to make sure you have it nice and snug uh, hopefully dry so it doesn't slip out of your hands too easily and you know you just have to get used to playing with that hand the opposite hand basically because your brain is is not used to doing it so you have to do repetitive motions until it becomes some kind of muscle memory and uh, I used to strum like you saw there um, 
away from the, the strings. I would miss the strings when I first started playing. Um, but you have to kind of get used to that. You have to look at the strings at first, just so you know the spacing and, and the angle, because it's all new. Your brain is not used to playing like this if you're not naturally left-handed. So little by little, you play every day and you start getting faster. Um, be more comfortable with holding the pick. And you can do little runs and get your, just like on a piano, you strengthen your right hand by doing little four note chromatic uh, runs. And you can do that on the bass guitar too. And it just helps getting that right hand stronger because your right hand's doing something it's not used to doing either, which is fretting notes on a, a guitar neck, bass neck. So it's a little bit of, um, a little bit of work. It's uh, telling your brain to relearn something because uh, it, it's just a matter of repetitive motion, like I said, and little by little, practice every day, and you start getting used to the way it, uh, it feels, and you'll get more proficient. You do something like, uh, you know, root notes and fifths and stuff like Love Me Do, do the easy Beatles songs first. Um, the boom, 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 boom. All that kind of stuff was the first stuff I started playing. So that'll get you going at least. So in this example, I'm showing you how to play with a, your finger and a pick for the uh, bridge on I Want to Hold Your Hand that Paul plays. And uh, it just gets you used to playing stuff like that. He played bass chords on a few other songs too, but this is a big one. You can see the fingering on here too. It's just something you have to practice, um, you know, over and over again, just repetitive motion, just like everything else I've been talking about. Your brain eventually will start getting used to it where you don't have to look at your fingers anymore. Um, but it's all about practice. Here I'm going to re-emphasize strumming on the bass and I used to drive around in my car with the pick on the steering wheel uh, just give you that motion with your, with, your, uh, with your pick against an object, you know, not strings, just any object really and getting the wrist used to going back and forth like that um, so you can learn how to play. So when it's all said and done, if you're able to do this you're about halfway there, I think. You just get that motion with the left hand, up and down with the pick, do it on every string. And between that, you got your bass, you got your pick, and you're about halfway there, and just keep working on it. Now with the cavern bass, uh, this is my German bass. With the cavern bass, obviously it looks different to the other one I was using. Uh, the main difference on this one, you can still pick, but the picking on this one is right over the other uh, bridge pickup. And the other face I was using, it's further down. This one's right in the middle. So it actually, it does hit from time to time. It does make a little clicking sound sometimes. Um, I don't really hear it on very many Beatle recordings, but you know, you play it just like he did, like he used that cavern bass on his heart, standing there and all that, on the first two albums, basically. Um, Please Please Me and With The Beatles. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna look at is a full scale Rickenbacker 4001. Um, this is my first left-handed Rickenbacker that I've owned. Uh, really cool bass, beautiful bass. Uh, obviously Paul used it uh, early on on Rubber Soul and Revolver and painted it later on for Magical Mystery Tour. Anyway, the difference is really the weight and that the neck is full scale. So when you're doing runs like this again, there's uh, further spaces in between the frets. So you got to get your mind <laughs> to relearn this spacing all over again. So you're, you're getting used to the Hofner one, which is a short scale. And the other thing to get used to is that 
this base has a, uh, a bridge pickup cover and it gets right in the way of where you want to play so you have to kind of make do some people take it off um, on this I leave it just to be more accurate um, but it, it does make you play closer to the um, base pickup the neck pickup I should say and it's a little bit of a getting used to but same kind of thing as with the Hofner you just have to practice you get used to the Hofner scale then you have to get used to the full scale lefty with the Rickenbacker and there's a weight thing involved as well so hopefully all this stuff helps I'm not sure if it did if it did thanks for watching so be on the lookout for a part two coming soon. And if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and share and send this video to all your musical friends and Beatle nuts. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.